There we go. Okay. Um, first off, I had to make up my notes here before we started. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget. I'd like to acknowledge, first of all, um, the Pralita chapter of our local uh, National Daughters of the American Revolution for their assistance in helping put this program together and some of the research that went into it. And also uh, Agnes Gore, our chairman of our board, also our great library information specialist who was instrumental in helping me ferret out a lot of these small clues on these individuals that um, are gonna be talked about here in the presentation. So thank you for your help with that. What got me started on this program was, I'm also the chairman of the Dahlonega Cemetery Committee. So if anyone's been to Mount Hope Cemetery, you will know that there are two Revolutionary War soldiers buried in Mount Hope that have markers there. And so at the, at the entrance to the cemetery, a lot of times people don't know this, but the photo on your right is a plaque that was placed by the Gainesville chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution in 1959. And this lists who they thought were veterans that had been living in or are buried somewhere in Lumpkin County. And so that kind of got me interested into thinking, besides just Mount Hope, how many veterans actually um, lived in Lumpkin County. So I wanted to try to separate the fact from fiction. So that's what got me started on doing this. So in order to get started, I went through some of our traditional sources of local research. The first one, besides the plaque itself that had some of the names listed, was Professor Kane's History of Lumpkin County for the first 100 years. And on page 138, as you'll see right there, for the section that says the Revolutionary War, it cites a Josiah Woody, a letter that he had written uh, after he had moved to Wapello County, Iowa. And he was a Revolutionary War veteran. And he was recounting some of the people that he remembered that had lived in Lumpkin County. So when I matched these two up, I also went to the Lumpkin County, Georgia Cemetery book as another source of information to try to verify, yes or no, uh, were these individuals listed in the cemetery book. So based on these three sources, I compiled them. And this is the list of names that I came up with uh, of possible veterans from the Revolutionary War that had lived in Lumpkin County at some point. But then we got the internet. And so the internet opened up a whole new area of more research right at researchers' fingertips. So you can find a lot more quicker than what previous researchers and genealogists and so forth had before. So on the left, as you see where it says deaths, this is an excerpt that I found that was reported in the Savannah Daily Republican on July 22nd, 1833. And in the area that's kind of highlighted in red right there, it talks about a gentleman named Samuel Brown, age 94 years, uh, who was a Revolutionary War veteran and veteran of the French and Indian Wars, who was reported to have died somewhere around Gainesville. And so I had never heard of this guy and he was in Gainesville. So I had looked him up, no record of him, no record of him being buried. He's out there somewhere. But as we're gonna see, there's a lot of information like this where these veterans had passed away, but they're anonymous. People don't really know where they're at. And on the right-hand side, this was a listing from the Lumpkin County 1840 census that listed Revolutionary War pensioners that were known to be living and their ages and where they were living at in Lumpkin County. So this was another, basically a snapshot to tell me at least in 1840, we know that these individuals were living here in the county at some point and where they're living at. Another thing that became important when I was doing the research was knowing our county lines and the dates because on the map on the left side of the screen, you'll see this is how Lumpkin County looked like from its founding in 1832 until 1857. You notice we bordered Habersham, Hall, Forsyth, Cherokee, Gilmer, and Union counties. But in 1857, White and Dawson counties were formed. So the point was, is that if someone may have died in Lumpkin County at a certain point, and they were living on what would have been like the, the county lines, 
they might physically be buried, and that is the case in, a, in, in some of these people, uh, they are physically buried in another county right now, not in Lumpkin County at this time. And so that's where I had to go ahead and try to be able to make sure I could separate fact from folklore when researching these individuals, because not all the information that's put out there is accurate, as everyone knows, okay? There's a lot of like bad information out there. So you gotta compare your sources uh, to make sure you're getting the right information there. And so moving on, without further ado, here are the veterans that we have found. Our first one was William Allen. Now he's buried in Mount Hope Cemetery, born about 1744 and died on October 4th, 1840. And what was interesting was learning some of the different military terms of the time as I was researching these people. Uh, when he served, his position or rank was a matros. And that was basically like the illustration shows. Uh, he was basically re responsible for maintaining a cannon in an artillery unit because he was assigned to the South Carolina Regiment of Artillery. And so a matros, he's not the actual gunner, he's the assistant gunner, but he's the one responsible for helping to load it, keep it clean, maintain it, and so forth. So that's what his occupation was during the revolution. And as you see, we've got part of his uh, service record down here at the bottom. And then on the right, um, this is his actual marker as it appears in Mount Hope Cemetery. There was a little bit of controversy surrounding his remains though. Um, and this was on the left-hand side where I got the little red arrow from Kane's history. And it talks about that when the original Dahlonega Methodist Church, which I happen to find an old photograph here, this is what the Methodist Church originally looked like, um, that when they were building the new one in 1929, 1930, there were supposedly, it had said that the remains of Revolutionary War soldier William Allen was supposed to be buried under uh, the church on the cornerstone. And they did find some remains that they interpreted to be William Allen's remains. And so he was reinterred in Mount Hope Cemetery. Uh, as we go on, there's two other individuals who are also supposed to be buried under the church, um, which also proved another source of controversy. But we know for sure that William Allen was at least one of them that was buried under the old Methodist uh, church. Our second one is Matthew Arthur. Uh, he was born about 1756, died about 1836. This one's a little bit of uh, a question because we're not so sure about him. Uh, we know that he was born in Bedford County, Virginia, uh, during the revolution, uh, he served as early as the age of 18 to help guard the gunpowder works uh, in the county. Because I guess this area of uh, Virginia and Bedford County, they had discovered or were able to make gunpowder. So it became a very strategic um, of importance for the revolution. After the war, he moved to Wilkes County, Georgia and served as a spy for the Georgia militia during the uh, Indian hostilities with the Creeks from 1793 to 94. And as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen right here, this was part of his service record. He served as a scout and spy. Um, spy and scout, basically the term was kind of interchangeable. Scouts for the most part went out in front of a main unit. They operated in small groups and basically they were the eyes and ears uh, like cavalry would be, but these guys were just on foot. Um, to go out and try to find information on the enemy. So basically, then a main body of troops would not get surprised. They have these scouts out there to gather information and try to figure out what the enemy's intent would be. Um, they moved to Franklin County, Georgia, sometime about 1801 and lived there until about 1819. Uh, in 1820, they moved again and moved into Habersham County and lived there for a number of years. What makes it... Um, questionable is that I did find uh, that Matthew signed a statement in 1834 in Lumpkin County deed book saying that any lands he might be entitled to uh, as a pensioner, uh, he was going to be given to his son, Charles Arthur. But we know he was in fact in Lumpkin County in 1834, but we never have been able to find where he was buried at. I didn't find an obituary or anything like this. So he possibly could be buried in Habersham County, which is now where he was living at in the Mount Yona district. That would be White County. Um, but we haven't found any uh, burial site for him in any of the cemeteries there. 
The next one was James Boy. Now, this one went back to what I was talking about with separating the fiction from the folklore. His name appears only in the book and on the plaque at Mount Hope. However, there was no mention of any James Boyd being of the right age that could have served during the Revolutionary War that ever lived in Lumpkin County. Um, I did find, as it says right here, there was four Boyd families listed on the state census for Lumpkin County in 1834, but uh, including a James Boyd. The only James Boyd that I found, as the headstone shows, is in the uh, Old Souls or Word of Life Pentecostal Church Cemetery, which is just off of 400 down the road by the Chesapeake Ford. Um, he's buried there. He was born in 1815, so he wouldn't have even been old enough to have served during the, uh, the War of 1812. So this was the only James Boyd that I know of. The only thing was that it's possible if he was James Boyd Jr., there might have been a father because there are grave sites that are not marked adjacent to this one in the picture. So it's possible that his father may have been living with him for a short time and passed away, but was never recorded uh, because we don't have a lot of newspapers from that time frame. So he, he could be buried there. But as I said, I didn't find anything of any pensioners from the revolution named James Boyd. Uh, even for the state, um, they had to register every couple of years within each state that they were living at. And I never did find a James Boyd in the state of Georgia that was listed as a pensioner uh, at, going back to as early as 1818. Next one was John Davidson. Um, what makes him interesting was that it's kind of confusing because there was a John Davidson. He did serve in the revolution, but I never found anything that indicated he lived in Lumpkin County. So I don't know where that information came from. Um, what I did find was that he was a private. Uh, he served in the uh, Colonel Thomas Brandon's South Carolina militia during the revolution. And his last pension payment was in September of 1855 in Jasper County, Georgia. Uh, as it shows on the right, this is an excerpt from a newspaper clipping that I found. Uh, there was a meeting in Jasper County, like a political type meeting. And as you see towards the bottom, that's underlined, all these gentlemen were listed as living in Jasper County, Revolutionary War soldiers, and John Davidson is listed as being one of them. Um, as I said, I didn't find any evidence that he ever lived in Lumpkin County. Uh, as early as the 1820s, uh, it sounds like he was living in, actually it says that in 1832, uh, he was living in Jasper County and receiving pensions through there. And if you know your history, 1832 is when Lumpkin County was uh, established. So it sounds like that when he did move here from South Carolina sometime after the war, uh, he lived in Jasper County all his life until he passed away in 1855 or, or thereabouts. Next one is William Fleming. He was born May 8, 1761 and died October 14, 1852. Uh, he served as a private from 1779 to 82 in South Carolina, Continental Line. Again, we got a lot of guys that served in South Carolina, North Carolina, which was kind of typical. Uh, moved to Hall County in 1832. Um, on 1838, for a state census in 840, the, eight, uh, the federal census, he's listed as living in Lumpkin County. But in 1840, it says he was living with his son, Isaac Fleming and his family in the Davis district of the county. So we do know that he was in fact living here as late as 1840. Uh, from the pension payment records, it shows that 1848 or thereabouts was when he received his last pension payment. Typically when they received their last pension payment was about the time that they passed away because they wouldn't have been eligible obviously to receive it unless there was a widow that submitted some paperwork. And he wasn't listed in 1849 for a pension payment. Um, the bad thing about him is that we don't know exactly when he passed away or where he's buried at. Uh, what I do know is that um, his family had moved away after he had passed away, supposedly, uh, but he may also be buried in Hall County. Why it said that, I'm not sure, because he was never living in Hall County, but I do know that on the 1850 census, the son Isaac and his family were listed and had moved away to Gilmer County. So it sounds like maybe that uh, sometime after the father had passed away, 
Uh, they buried him here somewhere in the county and then they moved over to Gilmer County. Uh, the rest of the Isaacs did. I don't think that he went with them, but I think that he's buried somewhere uh, in our county. John Haynes, here's another interesting one, 1752 to 1860. Now he moved around quite a bit, which I'd like to kind of detract for a second and say, what was interesting is that we think that people move a lot today. What we were seeing or what I was seeing when I was researching these guys is that these people were on the move. It was not untypical that every 10 years, maybe less in some cases, these guys were moving from one place to another. Maybe it was because the country was expanding and they had the opportunity for more land for farming and so forth. But you see these guys moving from one state to another, and it's it's quite amazing, uh, you know, considering the distances and the lack of uh, improved roads and so forth, that these guys are willing to move, you know, so much just to uh, get new lands. Anyway, um, he was in South Carolina in a militia company again. Um, after the war, relocated to Hall County, and then in Lumpkin County, at least by 1840, because he was on the census here. And then finally to Murray County, where he lived until he died about 1860. Now he was pretty old by that time. In 1911, his remains were reinterred in the Marietta National Cemetery and it has him listed on the 1840 Lumpkin County census as 94 years old, living in Captain Odom's district. And like it says, moved away to Lumpkin or to Murray County about 1847. Uh, this was his obituary from October 30th, 1860. Um, John Hames of Murray County died at the age of 130, so they say. He fought through the Revolutionary War and could tell many thrilling incidents connected with the memorable contest. He was one of the first settlers of the country, having been a resident of the above county for the last 20 or 30 years. Peace to his ashes to the old veteran. It was interesting when you could find some of these obituaries because some of these were few and far between. So when you find when these guys actually died, even in that case, a lot of times it's not too descriptive because it might not say which cemetery or, or maybe even the town where he's buried at, you know, trying to lo locate where these folks are at. Abraham Helton, we do know where he's buried at. Um, born about 1743, died 1843. So he was about age 100 or 101. Uh, he enlisted as a private in 1777 uh, with the Virginia Regiment. He moved to Lumpkin County in the 1830s, so he was one of the original settlers, and then died uh, 1843. Uh, we know where he's at. He does have a headstone. He's buried in a private cemetery out at the uh, Frogtown Winery. And this is a picture of his headstone where he's buried at, an illustration of what the uniform of a militia, a uh, Virginia Regiment militia, soldier would look like. Um, in the different illustrations that you see here, I had to research these and these are as close as I could find to matching up with the units that these veterans were supposedly serving with and the examples of the uniforms that they would have been wearing. So you see a lot of them, it's not the formal type of uniforms that we would associate with a colonial soldier. These are more backwoodsman militia. They were in the frock coats and hunting, hunting dress because that's what most of them were. They were you know, just local militia made up for their local towns or districts right there that got called out. Uh, and that's what they wore as, as their uniforms during the war. Reuben Hill, here's one of the examples I mentioned about knowing the county lines. Um, he was born about 1764, died July 25th, 1858. Service uh, served in North Carolina line as a private, and he was one of the first Revolutionary War veterans to apply for a pension in Lumpkin County in 1833. And he was listed as living in the Savannah district of Lumpkin County on the 1840 census. Now, when he died in 1858, that district, even today, was ceded to Dawson County. So, he was actually living in Lumpkin County until Dawson County was created. And so where he's buried at now at the Mount Vernon Baptist Church Cemetery is in Dawson County. And so here's an example of his original headstone that was carved and then his more recent one, which was a VA approved headstone. 
So we know where he is buried at. Our next one, a little bit more controversial, Richard Ledbetter. He is the second one. You'll notice we saw the one earlier from William Allen. This is the second Revolutionary War veteran that's buried in Mount Hope Cemetery. They're side by side with these markers. The controversy around Richard Ledbetter is that he's supposedly buried not here in Mount Hope, but actually in the Hightower District of Dawson County. And here's why we, we think this. From Find a Grave, when we look up Richard Ledbetter, um, someone from his family, one of his descendants had written this, and it said that on the December 17th, 1931, Richard's great-granddaughter wrote a letter saying that he had died, and he's not buried in Mount Hope Cemetery, but he was buried in a private family cemetery, the Kelly Family Cemetery, which is about six miles from her house, and here's a little bit of biography about him and that uh, he died, Lumpkin County, on his death on January 22nd, 1841, on the waters of the Hightower River, which ran within 100 yards of his son, Johnson Ledbetter's home place. And so he is not physically marked in this Kelly family cemetery. They know where the, the cemetery is, but his actual resting place is not marked or known within that cemetery right there but they do have the marker in Mount Hope. And the reason that this was kind of a controversy too is because Richard Ledbetter was supposed to be another one of the two people buried under the Methodist church, but that was never proven. That was just kind of a folklore type thing. So this is more of an honorary type mark that's in Mount Hope, but for practical purposes, uh, for if we believe what the family said, the descendants, he's not actually buried in Mount Hope. He's buried at the Kelly Family Cemetery, which is in Dawson County now. Wiley McLean, Agnes can tell you that this one really was driving me crazy because she was the one that actually found um, the needle in the haystack for me on, on this individual. Because as try as I might, the only information I could find about this Wiley McLean was a couple mentions of him in books, but nothing as far as no census records, couldn't find anything on that, um, nothing to indicate that he ever owned property in the county. The only thing that was strange was that, as it shows right here on the 1850 Lumpkin County census, there's a McLean with an M and a McLean. And the strange thing is that there's an Elizabeth McLean, age 80, don't know where she was born. And there's a James McLean, age 16, occupation minor, born in Georgia, living in the Savannah district. Now, I don't know if this was a coincidence, but they were living, according to the census, because it went house by house, they were only two houses away from Solomon Palmer or Palmour, which may be uh, important here. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, there is also another one, last name of McLean, which is the correct spelling. And again, Elizabeth, this one was age 58, born in South Carolina, and a James, age 16. So we got two James, but we got two Elizabeths, different ages, but they're living in the Auraria district. So I don't know if this might have been Wiley McLean's wife because she was 80. So that was, you know, she would have been older, of course, and James would have been grandson, possibly. And then down here, you got Elizabeth, age 58. I don't know, was this the daughter maybe? So it's kind of strange that you got just a slight change on the last name of the spelling, but you've got two Elizabeths, two James in two different places in the county right there. So I'm not sure what that was. Um, going back to what I was talking about with the Paul Moore Cemetery and um, Solomon Paul Moore, this was actually in Lumpkin County originally, but now again, this was in the Savannah district of Lumpkin County. So this physically resides in Dawson County now. These are photographs I took a couple of years ago at the Palmer McClure Cemetery. And as you can see, it's pretty run down and overgrown. 
It's a private cemetery. It's not maintained. It's on private property. It's actually not far from the house that Green Russell, if you know your Lumpkin County history, Green Russell owned. And so what it said on Find a Grave was that there's only 58 named or known graves in the cemetery. But as you can see down here in this picture, it says it's only estimated that 48% of the entire cemetery have been identified. So since Wiley McLean was living two houses away, and we know exactly it's very possible he might be one of those unknowns that's buried in this cemetery. And you'd have to cut down a lot of brush um, to uncover all those headstones and graves out there because it is fascinating um, to see all these old graves, but it's kind of sad that nobody's maintaining it uh, because it's on private property right there. Whoop. Our next one, uh, Levi Moat, born April 19, 1756, died about 1849. He does have a headstone and he is buried at the Yahula Creek Baptist Cemetery in Lumpkin County. Um, he served as a scout in the York District of Colonel Polk's regiment. After the war, he moves many times in South Carolina and then finally settled down here in Lumpkin County in 1844, died 1849. So at least we know where he's buried at because he's got a marker right there. John Nix, born about 1765, um, served as a private in Captain Bond's company in the South Carolina militia. He lived in Hall County and there was a number of last name of Nix living in Hall before he moved to Lumpkin about 1834. In the 1840 census, he was list listed as living with Micaiah Walker, who was his son-in-law. Uh, Micaiah Walker had married one of John Nix's daughters uh, and was listed as a Revolutionary War pensioner. His last pension was April of 1847, issued in Lumpkin County, but after that, the story kind of closes right there. We're not sure where he's at. Um, searching around the county and adjacent, there is a Nix Family Cemetery, and also at the Tesnati Baptist Church Cemetery in White County, there are a number of old Nix family graves and burials that are clustered there, so it's possible he may be buried there, but it's not marked. Um, didn't find anything in Lumpkin County to indicate where he might have been buried at here. So that's the best guess right now that he's across the county line and may be buried in White County. And this was an example of one of the records. This was a copy of his last pension signed by the Lumpkin County Justice of the Peace, uh, James Worley, on April 3rd, 1847. And you can see a lot of these documents, it's really hard to make it out because it's not all um, typed, obviously. It's all handwritten for the most part. So trying to see what these things actually read is difficult. That's why they still need to teach cursive in schools. George Pascal, he never physically lived here. This is an interesting story. Uh, he is buried in uh, the Antioch Baptist Church Cemetery in Auraria, and he was the husband of Agnes Pascal of Auraria. When he passed away, he died in the Skull Shoals area of Georgia, but the family had moved here to Auraria in the early days, just when it was getting started in 1833, and they had his body reinterred and brought back, and he's physically buried in Auraria now at the cemetery there. So he never physically lived here, but he's buried here. And his service, he was uh, in a Continental Light Dragoons Regiment, which is kind of interesting because these were mounted troops and uh, dragoons were a, a sort of cavalry. They were equipped to fight mounted or dismounted. So they were not just strictly cavalry. They had kind of a dual role uh, in what they were doing. And this is uh, what his column obelisk type headstone looks like. And then he's got another more modern one down at the bottom. And this was his obituary that I found uh, when he died. He was li living in Oglethorpe County when he passed away. And it gives a little example or story about his, uh, his history, his biography.
Michael Pilgrim, born about 1753, died about 1841 or 46. I can't see that. Whoop. He was uh, from Virginia. He was drafted into the Henry County, Virginia militia. And he lived in Habersham County after the war on the 1820 census. And then at some point he had moved into Lumpkin County. Okay. 1836 records show he received a pension payment. Uh, and he was 86 years old. And he was living with, on 1840, he was living with a Samuel Etrus in the Captain Turner Militia District. Strangely enough, he moved to Habersham County about September of 1841. Um, he had a brother, Thomas Pilgrim, who was also a Revolutionary War veteran. But sadly, neither of these brothers can be found. I'm assuming that because he moved um, to Habersham County in 1841, that either he or his brother were in bad health. Um, but it's assumed that he died uh, either in Habersham or in Lumpkin County sometime about 1848. Uh, but we haven't been able to find either one of their grave sites or in any of the cemeteries. Edmund Singleton, as you can see on the right, we do have a grave marker for him again. He lived in the Savannah district of Lumpkin County. Uh, and so obviously that was ceded to Dawson County. That's why he has a headstone in Dawson County at the Bethel United Methodist Church in Dawsonville. And his service was, he was in the first regiment of the Continental Light Dragoons. And he lived in Pendleton, South Carolina until 1837, moved to Georgia and eventually moved and was living with his son Overstreet Singleton in Savannah District of Lumpkin County until his death in 1845. And so originally he was buried in Lumpkin County, but then when Dawson County was established, that's where his grave is at now. Robert Singleton. This one I found absolutely no information about a Robert Singleton Revolutionary War veteran living in Lumpkin County. There was a son of Edmund Singleton, the one I just talked about, named Robert. And there were a number of Robert Singletons who were War of 1812 veterans, but I haven't found any pension applications or records for a Robert Singleton in Lumpkin County. So I don't know if this was someone totally different, but I haven't found any actual proof that a Robert Singleton Revolutionary War veteran lived in Lumpkin County, or even in the state of Georgia per the federal um, pension records. So he's another mystery on how his name came about being recorded on the, uh, the, the plaque in Mount Hope. Thomas Townsend, this would have been the grandfather of W.B. Townsend, who was the editor and publisher of the Dahlonega Nugget. He enlisted as a private in 1775 with the Camden District of the South Carolina Line. Uh, Captain John Wallace's company of Neal's regiment. After the revolution, he moved to Georgia, owned a number of properties, but finally settled in Lumpkin County about 1833 or 34. Now his widow's application, Sarah, that was W.B. Townsend's grandmother, stated that he died February 17th, 1836 in Lumpkin County, Georgia. So we've got a physical witness, his wife says that he died in Lumpkin County. Where he's buried at, we don't know. That's the strange thing. Uh, we do know that he was living in town in the Dahlonega City District uh, when he supposedly passed away in 1836, but we don't know if he's buried in Mount Hope or someplace else. And that uh, his widow, by the 1840 census, she was living again, like it shows right here, Captain Harbin's District, which was the Dahlonega Village, uh, as late as 1840. So we know that she was actually living in town right here after Thomas's Townsend's death. So he possibly might be buried in an unmarked grave in Mount Hope. Isaac Watts, this one drove me crazy too. He was another one that was supposed to be buried in Mount Hope. However, 
I have found, again, absolutely no information on Isaac Watts ever existed living in Lincoln County, period. Um, I have searched for census records, for pension records, anything to indicate that there was Isaac Watts living in Lumpkin County, nothing. There was an Isaac Watts and there were a number of brothers, but they were not living in Lumpkin County. And there's nothing to indicate that they ever moved even up this way. Um, there were some Watts that did live in Lumpkin County early on, that, that, that's true, but there was nothing to indicate that there was an Isaac there at all. John J. Williams, born 1759, died July 1849. This was an interesting one. Uh, his service, it said that he was known as an artificer. And I had to look that up because I had never heard that phrase before. And basically, if you would think of a mechanic or a craftsman, someone that would be required, blacksmith, gunsmith, somebody that had a valuable skill that you would need in order to keep the army moving, okay? Somebody to repair weapons, fix leather, repair wheels on cannons, things like that. They actually had whole companies or battalions of these guys. So this would be like the modern day maintenance company uh, attached to an infantry unit or to a tank unit or something, the ones that keep things going to support the army so they could fight the battles. After the war, um, Williams returned to North Carolina and then later moved to Tennessee, but he finally moved to Lumpkin County where he died uh, in, on October 6th of 1849. And I actually found his obituary. Now this was a reprint from the Dahlonega Watchman that was reprinted in some other state newspapers. This is the great thing about the internet. We can look up old newspapers and try to find collateral news that was reported from Dahlonega, even though we do not actually have the Dahlonega newspapers. So some of these great articles come in handy. And as it shows, um, another soldier of the revolution has departed, John J. Williams, died on the 13th installment, which means, I don't understand that one. Does that mean September 13th? I'm not sure, but we know it's 1849. He lived to see the 73rd anniversary of American liberty and the number of the United States swell from 13 colonies and states to 30 states. And this was printed in the Dahlonega Watchman on the 10th installment. So I'm assuming this means October 10th as it shows up here. So here we got physical proof. John J. Williams, he did die in the county, but it doesn't say where. So we know he died in Lumpkin County, but we don't know which cemetery, again, where Mr. Williams was buried at. And finally, get down to Jonathan R. Woody. Interesting story. Jonathan R. Woody, as you'll notice, this cemetery is not in Lumpkin County, nor is it in the state of Georgia. Jonathan Woody, this is one of the individuals that we got from Kane's history. He is buried in Dahlonega Township, Wapello County, Iowa, and is one of the very few Revolutionary War soldiers that's buried there. The story goes that at the age of 90 something, he rode a horse all the way from Dahlonega, Georgia to Iowa, since they had a land new lands available up there, and that's where he moved to. This was a little bit of his biography. Born in 1756 in North Carolina. Uh, after the war for three years, he fought during the Creek Wars in Georgia. After the war, he moved back to South Carolina, then to North Carolina, where he raised a family, and so on. As it says, these people, they moved around a lot. Um, he moved in 1845, to Wapello County, Iowa, after the death of his wife, Mary, here in Lumpkin County. He didn't live in Lumpkin County very long, 1843 to 1845. So he was only here in Lumpkin for just two years. At the age of 90, he rode a horse to Iowa, which were lands that were opening up to the West. And it said that he named the township of Dahlonega, Iowa, after his hometown of, or where he had just come from, Dahlonega, Georgia. And so some of the names that were in Kane's history had come from it's said in Kane's history, Josiah Woody. I don't know where they got Josiah from, but his name was actually Jonathan Woody. And this goes on to tell you a little bit more about him. So a couple additional mentions. Solomon Palmore, if you recall, we talked about the Palmore McClure Cemetery. He is one that is actually buried in that cemetery, which is in Dawson County. And he was born in Essex County, New Jersey, 1763 listed on the 1840 
Lumpkin County Census, living in the Savannah District. But it didn't have him listed as a Revolutionary War pensioner, which is kind of strange because he does have a military, a VA approved headstone, as you can see on the right hand side here. Died in Savannah District of Lumpkin County in 1841 and buried at the Palmore McClure Cemetery, which is in Dawson County. And Wes Walker, from 1780 to 1843. If you know your history about the revolution, it sounds like it's a little bit late to be a Revolutionary War soldier. However, on the Fold3 website, which is one that lists veterans by conflict, they do include some of the frontier wars with the natives after the war as kind of inclusive with the, uh, the revolution right there. So it's not like a separate category. But uh, as you can read, uh, he was the only son of Elijah Walker and Rebecca Carroll. They moved to Franklin County, Georgia, about 1790, joined the Georgia militia, and he fought in the Frontier War under Lieutenant John Stonecipher until December 27, 1796. Uh, married Judah Peak, about 1800, um, moved around to Hall County uh, near the base of Walker Mountain. That's who it was named for, for West Walker. People now know it as Waka Mountain. The family made the decision to move to the Yahula Valley, north of Dahlonega about 1832, possibly because of the gold lottery. And uh, when they died, uh, he was buried in the church cemetery of the Walker family section near the back. But it says that many old river rock stones were removed by the lawnmower man in the 1950s. So his exact burial location has been lost. So they know he's supposed to be in the cemetery, but they don't know exactly where. And as you see on the right side here, this was um, his service record for the Georgia militia in Lieutenant Stone Cipher's detachment to show that he did actually serve right there. So here's our summary. I know it's a lot of people, but uh, I just wanted to kind of break it down. So no records found at all were from James Boyd, Robert Singleton, and Isaac Watt. So nothing I have been able to discover proves that any of these guys ever existed, let alone were Revolutionary War veterans. We know for sure, not buried in Lumpkin County, is these guys listed in red right here. We know for sure, because we know where their headstones are at, or markers, that they are buried in Lumpkin County. And here's our maybes. We're not sure if they're buried in Lumpkin County, Habersham, maybe White County, Wiley McLean, Thomas Townsend, John J. Williams, John Nix, Martha, or Matthew Arthur, and William Fleming. So that's like maybe another way to be seen type part of the story right here, because we're not sure if we're going to find them. Um, I think that Wiley McLean, he would probably be, as far as my opinion, the best bet since he might be buried in that uh, Paul Moore McClure Cemetery. If someone were to go in there and start to uh, weeding that and clearing it out, we might find his headstone uh, or marker in that cemetery. Whereas the rest of these guys, we're not sure where they're actually buried at. So any questions? I know that was a lot of information. I hope it didn't bore you too much there, but uh, obviously took a lot of research to uh, come up with the information on these individuals. Mandy, did you want to unmute anybody? And does anybody have questions? People can un unmute themselves if they want to and ask a question. Okay. Click the little microphone in the lower left hand corner. Yes. Um I had a, a comment sure. rather than a question. I have a comment. Um, I, I love the uh, graphics that they put together. Thank you. And um, it's, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> it's really interesting that you found out so much. And, but my, my question is, how in the world did these soldiers live to such an old age. 
Well, you know, that's a good See? question because most of these guys were living up until their 80s, 90s, 100s. I know. <laughs> it's just, it astonished me. And into the hundreds. <laughs> I, I wonder why that was. They fighting in wars, being exposed to infections and diseases and a lack of food or whatever. How in the world did they live so long? It just astonished me. I think that they were a tougher breed back then. <laughs> I guess. The, the strong survive. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask a question uh, about the, uh, the Revolutionary War of pensions. I think you, you did uh, show when it, they actually started, the government started giving pensions, but it seemed like um, people didn't apply for those or they waited until later in life? I mean, much later in life to, to get them? Yeah. Or? That's a good question. Uh, the earliest ones that I found for Revolutionary War veterans that could apply began about 1818. Okay. And obviously this was because it was after the uh, War of 1812 was over. And so the government had to have money in order to be able to pay these uh, veterans, you know, a pension and so forth. Um, but that's a good question because uh, in the case of Jonathan uh, Woody, the one that went to uh, Iowa, he was illiterate. It said that he could not read or write, and he did not know, even until he got to Iowa, that he was entitled to a pension. Mm -hmm. So I guess it was if, if someone didn't tell them or they hadn't read the papers, obviously, they might not have known this. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And I, I just wanted to reiterate what you had said about it's so sad that uh, so many of these uh, grave markers are either gone or they're not marked. And they're just uh, just unknown, I guess, in, in many old cemeteries like that that just haven't been uh, kept up. It's just really sad. It's true. Uh, one of the things that I found uh, in my capacity as the, the Mount Hope Cemetery was I found a number of obituaries, and some of these were prominent individuals in Lumpkin County that passed away. And even in their obituaries, it said they were buried in the city cemetery uh, or Mount Hope. And my thinking is that two things is that families either move away or die off. And so that's why some of these graves weren't uh, kept up right. uh, or if they died in anonymity. Nobody bothered to place a permanent stone marker there. It might have been wood. And then over time, it just got dilapidated, you know, deteriorated and fell apart and nobody put a replacement there. So. Right. Chris, if I could ask you, first, let me, uh, if I may, compliment you on the graphics and presentation. It was absolutely amazing and wonderful. Thank I have you. a question concerning um, that lawnmower man in the 50s. Can you tell us a little something about that? Who was this person? Uh, I don't know who that was. This was just taken from um, his Find a Grave uh, biography that someone had posted on there. So this was someone from his family or descendants that had written this from the Walker family. So they might know something or possibly the church, since we know it's at Yahula Baptist Church, maybe they have some records who the lawnmower man might have been. Okay, and I'm curious too, one other thing, if you don't mind, how did you get these names in the first place? How would you begin this search? Well, let's go back to the beginning up here. Um, the first one, as I said, it was from the, uh, the marker that's at the entrance to Mount Hope. Let me go back to that. There you go. Um, you'll notice here, if you read the marker, it does have the names listed of the individuals that the DAR had researched in 1959, uh, the chapter from Gainesville that placed this marker. And these were the men that they had listed from their records. Um, obviously, the records in 1959, you know, we've got more information now, so we can compare and um, check things out to see where they were living at. But the thing that made it interesting was that it said that they were believed to have lived in this area. It didn't specifically say this county or this town. So like in the case of uh, John Davidson, who's listed right here, we know now that he never lived in Lumpkin County. He was in Jasper County. So maybe some of their records that they were reviewing, it maybe led them to believe that he was in Lumpkin County. I'm not sure. But everything that I had reviewed from census records to pensions and so forth, it never listed Davidson uh, living in Lumpkin County. 
that's the good thing about this thing with the internet. Um, one of the sites that I had used, it's called Fold3. And this was kind of run by Ancestry. And it's basically nothing but military records that date back to the revolution or the colonial period. And so it, it's not complete. A lot of these things I'm finding is that if they served in local militias, a lot of times these records might have been lost. Or I've seen testimonials where guys said, well, I was discharged and that was it. You know, I never got any information or paperwork saying I could apply for a pension and so forth. So um, that's why some of these guys were hard to find because there was no information really existing until if they might have come forward to say I'm entitled to a pension, they would have to review that. And so this was done in their counties. So a number of sources I had to use from county superior court minutes to the ancestry, um, biography, sometimes even their wife. If I couldn't find the individual, that pensioner, the veteran, sometimes if I could find out who the wife was, she might have been entitled to that as the widow. And so if I could find her name, then maybe there's a testimonial there. Like in the case of um, Thomas Townsend, it had his wife testifying, okay, he died in 1836 here in Lumpkin County. So boom, there it is. I know that he died in Lumpkin County based on his wife's um, testament there. Well, Chris, you'd make an amazing detective, I think. <laughs> yeah. Chris, that was well put together. Thank you. For <laughs> it really is well put together. It's very impressive. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I have a quick question. Um, I was very interested in reading the obituaries that you were able to find. And how were you able to find those newspapers? Do you have a good source for, for looking up those? I do. Uh, so like this one, um, if you go onto this website, it's called Historic Georgia Newspapers. Hmm. We had them come to speak to the Historical Society a few years ago. They are in the bowels. I mean, it's the sub-basement of the UGA library. And basically this is part of the Georgia newspaper project. So what they do is they gather newspapers, old newspapers from every city they can get a hands on across the state and they microfilm them number one. In the past few years, they've been digitizing them. So the great thing is that if I was to go on the website right now and you can just type in a word or a search phrase. So if I was to type in John J. Williams, for example, it's going to give me every possible hit or one that sounds like this in all these different newspapers. And there's ways to manipulate that as far as you can change the years. So if you're only looking for like a 10 year period, you can type that in, start here and here um, or things like that. What made it interesting for me was that the words that I used to try to find a lot of these revolutionary war soldiers is that they used the same phrase for these obituaries. Another soldier of the revolution gone or has departed. And if I type that in, I'm gonna get all these guys from different counties that had listed, some from different states, uh, if it was reported like nationally, like some revolutionary war general or a colonel or somebody who was very important there. But for these, um, this is good just to use the uh, Georgia Historic Newspaper Project. So if you're doing any type of research that has to do with Georgia, this is a great source. This is one of my number ones I've been using for a number of years. Chris, did you see the chat? I did not. Let me stop sharing here. Chat. Yeah. Ah, there we go. That's pretty cool. Edmund is my Everybody fifth. can see that. Yeah. Send the location of the Palmer McClure Cemetery in Dawsonville. Edmund is my fifth great grandfather from Stephen Swafford. Says I'm not. Okay, Anne's answering the question about how did they live very long? If they survived childhood in the war, they were tough. Yeah. <laughs> In that age, really? I know. 
It's amazing. Well, you know, in many ways, uh, they might have lived a healthier lifestyle than we do today. You know, they they walked a lot, I'm sure. You didn't grab mm -hmm. a car and go someplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the food they had, it was all fresh food, right? You didn't have any uh, stuff that was processed. Uh, they didn't eat white bread for the <laughs> most part. They probably ate all whole grains and uh, maybe a limited amount of meats because uh, they might've been expensive. So you may mainly ate uh, fresh foods. You know, you couldn't keep things for very long then unless it was salted or mm -hmm. pickled. No artificial colorings and things. Yeah, like that. exactly. That's right. You know. And they didn't die in a car wreck either. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Watch get, get picked by the mule though. No, no. You could could avoid, by the horse uh, waterborne diseases, you know, like cholera, typhus, typhoid, and things like that. You're home free. Hey everybody, I've got to run, but thank y'all for letting me join in with y'all. That was that was very well done, Chris. Uh, Sam, you do a wonderful job, not only tonight, but on the cemetery committee. And wanted to give a shout out to Shannon too, uh, Sharon, for serving on our historic preservation commission. So thank y'all a bunch. And and looks like DAR. I guess it's everybody, everybody's connected somehow, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, your program stemmed from the DAR work in the 1950s. And so anyway, it's a it's a wonderful community. Everybody's in it together. So. But, uh, but thank y'all for letting me join in and, and learn something tonight. Good night, Sam. Good night. We have any more questions from anyone? Well, thank you for attending. I appreciate everybody's attention and uh, patience going through all these names here. Um, next month, we still don't have the program actually laid out yet, but I will get in contact with the uh, folks from the uh, Pick and Bow to find out if they would be amiable to uh, doing a program for us. And maybe we can get, if the weather's permitting, um, the park pavilion to uh, try to do an outdoor program there. So stay tuned. And Ma Mandy, since this is being recorded, we'll have this posted to the Facebook page mm -hmm. within the next couple of days or so. Uh, I, I, That's right. Web page, I think, right? Uh, no, I'm going to post it on our YouTube channel, and then uh, Chris is, and I will. Uh, Chris will post the link to the to the YouTube channel in Facebook, and I will post it on on the website. Okay. And I will send it to you, Robbie, and you can send the link to everybody. Well, guess what? I recorded it too. So what I normally do is I go ahead and download that recording onto something like a DVD, some sort of permanent record and put it in the filing cabinet. Okay. And I refer to it back when I, when I write my uh, uh, newsletter. Mm -hmm. I have something to refer to. So if you say you're not right about that, I can say, well, he said it right here. <laughs> now, if anyone's interested in cemeteries in Dawsonville, Carol's here. And Carol was one of our guest speakers here on cemetery preservation and headstone cleaning. So we communicate uh, fairly often and compare notes when it comes to that stuff. So if you ever want to know something about uh, the Dawson County Historical Society or cemeteries in Dawsonville, Carol's the one to go to. We can try. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. It was a fabulous for presentation. Thank Great you job. and have a good night. All right, be Thank safe, you. everybody. Bye-bye. All right, good night. All right, good night.